This is for the nerds, this is for the brainiacs, this is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back, you ain't gonna touch me, you're not gonna do nothing, you are not above me, I bet you wish you was me, I know that I know. What's up everybody, welcome to another episode of the Only Friends Podcast. This is episode number 72, we're on day 41 of the World Series. It's wow. all coming to an end, much like our hopes and dreams oh. in the main event. We got a full house uh, here today. We yeah. have a full house here today, and that is not good because it's day five of the Fuck. Dead, <laughs> dead, 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 dead. One of us cashed. Conrad cashed. Conrad cashed. Conrad cashed. Congratulations, good job, Connie. Conrad. Back to back. Went a little better. Back to back day fours, two years in a row. Quite mm-hmm. impressive. I think it was in day five last year, right? Didn't you yeah. day five last year? Yeah. yeah. Right, so back-to-back day fours. <laughs> sure. Back-to-back <laughs> caches. Congratulations. Uh, well, well, you ate the shit. Why, well, thanks. Were, were the jacks a good fold? Do we know? Ace king. Mm. I mean, it's just the worst hand he has, though. Yeah. It'd be that nice sucks. to just run it there, though. Yeah, I know. Especially now that it's I broke the fucking diamond. <laughs> why? It's not... I ran ace king into jacks. It wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have fun. Yeah, no, but he had jacks. So uh, yeah. right. Yeah. jacks. Right. Does he I look mean, like a man beaten by a pair of jacks. Four bet folding. <laughs> four bet folding jacks is uh, one of the less desirable things to do in no limit hold'em. I think. Not that it's not approved. It's just you know not fun. It's no sucks. good way to play jacks, man. <laughs> it hurts the Mike so much. McDonald. Trouble yeah. hand. No. Um, right. So yeah. Your dreams are dead. Our dreams are dead. Uh, <laughs> Christian, dead Christian actually just ended it all. He's, he's gone. gone. Yeah, he Andre's with us Hi now. Guys. Uh, he's okay. a permanent staple to the to the podcast. No, that's not true. Well, for the next five days. <laughs> yeah, I'm gone after uh, after Sunday. I'm just I'm gone. He's just gone. I'm dropping yeah. like flies around yeah. here. So so we're looking for uh, co-hosts now that uh, Christian yes. has committed poker suicide. <laughs> <laughs> He, he literally said he's going back to the Dominican Republic. Fuck this place. Yeah. Uh, this happens really every good. time he busts the main event. He's on the first it's a flight sad out. It's time, Burke. It's wow. he, he's, he's on the I first flight like, out. Was, I, was a little, I was a little down in the dumps for a couple of days. I don't know if it's just the, like, you know, the chemicals just settling down or something. It, settling down. It's, it's the FOMO for me. I don't even think Chin the FOMO went sucks. home last two years ago for the main event like three years ago huh because he cashed <laughs> no, no 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 i mean he went straight to the airport oh he went straight no he it's, literally went straight to the airport yeah it's it's confirmed he's never played the little one he doesn't have the heart <laughs> like nope. the, the second the main event dreams are dashed his summer is concluding i played that four fucking times in one day it was painful <sighs> well yeah gotta try again He's got to try Fresh again. Out, man. Try again. Yeah, no. I mean, they did him dirty, though. He got fucked. He did. But that's normally how you get removed from. That the is how you that get is, removed. Yeah. When, you have, when you have a lot of chips, that's how, how did he go. Or when you have any chips. Uh, he three bets small blind versus blind with ace king. Board comes ace three three. He bets. Got calls. Turns a six. He bets again. Got calls. Rivers a ten. Jams. Get called. And the guy has ace three for a full mouse. Oh my! Like probably one or two combos of Ace three. It might even be one. Maybe one. Yeah. Christian blocks the Ace three. Yeah. He loses then. to more than that though. He That's... loses to Ace ten, Ace six. You know. He loses to hands, but he busts there. He beats Ace queen, Ace jack. Yeah. Loses to Ace aces. Five. There's one of those. He yeah. loses to aces. Yeah. <laughs> Torius wants to play. Them yeah. If slowly. we really want to play this game, <laughs> uh, if we really want to play this game, he probably gets called by more better hands than worse on the river. Okay, if that's the case, you should just be over bluffing every single hand he ever has, right? Because you just don't have enough combos otherwise. Well, sort of. Uh, if it's... people can't, if people don't call enough, you right. have to start bluffing. But when you're bluffing, you afford them more calls. But they don't do it because they fold ace queen. But they have more ace queen when you have jack ten. Not when you have queen jack. Well, then they have the same. Mo- then they have more ace king. But they're gonna fold it. They're not. No. What are you talking? I never said they weren't calling with Ace Queen and Ace Jack. I saw somebody saying, fold a flush yesterday, man. People fold a lot of things. Uh, we yeah. don't need to fight. So they do fold a lot of things. Yeah, it's My too point early is, is like if this. they have if they, they have look- Ace Three and they have Quad Threes and they have Aces and they have uh, Sixes tens. and they have Ace Six and Ace Ten and then maybe even a small percentage of Tens, 
having ace queen ace jack isn't enough anymore right we need them to find those mixed frequency calls with ace nine ace eight ace seven ace five Ace four, yeah, three. So that, just, that's the problem with the main event. That's what makes it such a hairy. So then you should mm. just bluff every suited Jack through King combo you have. King Jack, King Queen, King Ten, Queen Jack, Queen Ten. Uh, I them. mean, yeah, it helps. It helps to be bluffing those, but you know, you can't block. You can't block all their calls. Of course not. But they don't call enough anyways. You block the ones that are easy. When you say enough, Ace Queen's an easy one. When you say enough, what do you mean? Like proportionally. Comparatively speaking. <laughs> Comparatively speaking. speaking. All right, brother, listen here. Comparatively speaking, I'm going to bluff catch with the best bluff catching combos comparatively to the worst bluff catching combos. Uh, Comparatively speaking. You it's do a better job so, than so odd does. How, I know. It's just so odd how like everybody just funnels into like the tightest range as possible, yet somehow still folds everything that's not the nuts, but when they do have the nuts, they still call, I, but I sometimes think, they might fold. I think you're viewing... I, I think you're conflating the math with the the visualization of what the range looks like are you saying math is a lie no i'm saying that uh on the end there's a frequency that calls let's for argument's sake say that it's 60 percent of hands that uh -huh. get there right uh when you look at equilibrium the 60 percent of hands that call in the river are hands that like took a very natural path to getting there and are supposed to call based off of like removal effect like a worse ace correct okay right um, but then, you know, oftentimes like pocket tens will never be there. It'll yeah. be like a 0% frequency, but like these, these people, <laughs> these people might show up with tens in full. Yeah. Right. They might show up with ace king in full Yeah. where it should like only be there a third of the time. Uh -huh. They might show up with like ace queen and ace 10 and ace three off in full where it should only be there fractionally. So I think to make the generalized statement that like, they they don't call enough and therefore we should just massively rip off all of our bluffs is is too um too simple because your bluffs are going to get obliterated too what we're saying is that their their calling tendencies tend to be hierarchically greater than what we would do in equilibrium because we value blocking and removal where they value the actual linear scale of hands Mm -hmm. So instead of calling ace nine at a frequency, ace eight, ace seven, ace six, whatever, they just like pure fold and have enough ace queen, ace jack, ace ten, pocket tens, pocket sixes, pocket threes, ace three offsuit mm -hmm. that's supposed to raise fold, right? They just have enough of these hands that they're not making a grave error. And your bluffs can't print because you can't have enough coverage uh, <laughs> through removal to get them to start overfolding. So their perception of their range is different than your perception Correct. of their perception. I mean, yeah, the right. equilibrium shifts. And yeah. the, we, we can't intuit that in real time. Yeah. So we default back to what we know the, the theoretical equilibrium to be. Yeah. And I think oftentimes that leads to a lot of uh, overvaluing what we would consider to be top of range. Or just mischaracterization of the hand altogether. Yeah, like, like uh, just... here's the easiest way to look at this uh, hand in the inverse, right? And it's not to scrutinize Chin. I think he plays the hand relatively fine. But imagine instead of betting three streets, he check called three streets. How comfortable do you feel check calling shove on river with ace king there? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty comfortable, sue me? Yeah, you're sued. I'm not, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> small blind three bet pot, check. You check a range bend, you have, to, you have the best hand you possibly have. No, because you're, you're, you're not factoring in the, the fact river. that people are afraid with less yeah. than ace king. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. what do they have? Well, when they shove, <laughs> when they shove, they have the boats, boats, boats. Yeah. No, 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 like think about it, right? Because exactly. like, if they bet, they don't have sixes, they don't have tens. It's ace three three. And but, if he barrels, he doesn't have sixes, he doesn't have tens. But they just might. They just might. Yeah. They just might protection tens bet them. Ace they definitely have sixes. Yeah, they just might protection bet them for small and flop. <laughs> I know I said house. definitely, but they definitely could have sixes, right? Oh I mean, like, it's the main event. They, there's a lot of people that make a lot of like mistakes. Correct. Correct. I know, but, yeah. but their thought process but is like, oh, traumatized. I, yeah. <laughs> I could have aces here, so let me bet my sixes, you know, and just fold them out and fold their equity out. Combinatorically, it is very hard to have a good hand here when you, someone has ace king. Sure. It is. Yeah, that that yeah. That's that we true. can all agree upon. Yeah. I'm just saying, That's like... That's why it's unlucky, man, but... I wonder how many times people have, like, set a hand history. How many like people blast? Other, Sorry. Just like to their friends, but like they always preface it with "it's the main event." <laughs> because people play differently in the yeah. main. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we can sure. we can rework this problem yeah. set a million different ways. If Christian opened the button in the small blind three bet and he called with Ace King, 
and faced three shells, he's not going to feel good about yeah. calling that all in on the end. You chop with Ace King, bro. I understand. The guy doesn't have a three. But I mean, he can. <laughs> that, that's yeah. Yeah. Three bits and he can have all threes there do too. We under, do, do we recognize that like people make egregious errors in the main event? Yeah, especially pre-flop. That, right. That's the problem. It's the assumption that like they they don't have these hands. Just like, well, yes, they do because they're just clicking so, buttons. So people so play at the day two, and everybody's pretty deep, and it plays damn well like a cash game. So it's like. Yeah. People just peel. Yeah, people have ace three off fa facing but a button raise, uh, and they don't know what to do. Uh, he's fuck, not they have peeling. six three off. <laughs> well, let's not go that far. Like, they look yeah. at ace three off in small blind versus button, and they recognize, like, oh, I'm supposed to attack the button with certain hands. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I have an ace. Mm -hmm. so, so sometimes they just, like, randomly click three bet. I don't know, yeah. man. I saw, like, they heard somewhere, like, oh, will aces are good. So I'm going to, uh, I found one. I'm going to three bet it. Yeah. That's, that's, Did you see right? anybody three bet an ace three off in the main when you played? I have. You saw no this May, year. This exact year, probably not. But I have. What was seen the worst hand you saw a showdown when someone threw that? Uh, I think it was like a seven off. Five four. Seven. I mean, we could just watch Seriously. the coverage. You could just watch the yeah. coverage. There's a lot of nonsense. I, I saw King seven off rejam for twenty five yesterday. Uh, just there, there's there's plenty of. Did he have the guy People covered. have freak out no. moments. Like he these are humans. He busted. On, <laughs> he busted on the feature table with it. I wasn't justifying. I was just I was acting. I was just asking because people normally take more aggressive lines when they cover someone because they know that they I agree get, with because they know uh, if they get called they're still in the tournament. Yeah, yeah. People that, don't want to jam the king seven off yeah. if they if they're covered because then they could be out. That, this is this is a giant perplexity of of the main event is that we're trying to do our damnedest to generate a strategy that yields the highest EV in the highest EV event of the year. But what we have to first recognize is that where all of that EV is derived from is dead money. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we like to simplify it in our brains and say that dead money generally does these X amount of mistakes. And these X amount of mistakes will just naturally be taken advantage of because we're better than them and we don't make said mistakes. But oftentimes that's just fundamentally untrue, yeah. right? Because we're not looking closely enough at the nuances of where the mistakes that they make are kind of corrected for. For instance, we could say that like uh, the general populace is too wide in double barrel situations. And that's probably true. We saw Zhao Yang yesterday um, just absolutely blasting on these tables yes. <laughs> just blasting he was, blasting. He, was a, he was such a joy to watch he's blasting yes. but so anyway, I started blasting. we watched him give up <laughs> rivers where he could never win over and over and over and over again so if you stop at the generalization of the general populace is too wide double barreling you forget the fact that they're too tight when they triple barrel mm -hmm. right and now that mistake massively compounds because yeah. on turn you say i'm just going to let him keep bluffing it off yeah. and then the bluff never comes on river and you constantly bluff catch against nuts yeah. i mean in in the same line of thinking they're under protected in their turn checkbacks right also true uh so, so that allows us those. to bluff rivers more yeah but uh what i'm trying to uh, I, I guess identify is that there are, if we call two simple aspects of the, the, the tree to examine bluff catching and bluffing, uh, it doesn't really boil down to a simple uh, yes, no answer of against weak, bluff, or against weak players, I can bluff catch more. Against weak players, I can bluff more. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of nuance to yeah, those things. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know this is the first, like, I, this is like the first series actual series i've played i only played like one event last year but i really like the pre ranges are so different like i was not expecting to see ace king so much in single raise pots and stuff like yeah. i got like two pair beaten by by ace 10 to their ace king and i was just like wait what why do you have that hand right. i was so like confused seeing the hands in single raise pots right. like you and, have and to account for their entire key, key, key. range a general theory would just say you can't know what they're doing uh off of equilibrium yeah. to deviate yeah so just presume that their rational actor is playing according to equilibrium right and never adjust because yeah. even if they deviate like the theory is that uh you're implementing or executing a plus ev strategy that will take advantage of them naturally the problem is is that you're not yeah because you're also human right. and you don't know all the in ins and outs of, of game theory optimal and the fact of the matter is there's more money to be made to adjusting to somebody that you know flat ace king pre yeah right like if you're able to now 
This is the beauty of the main event. This is what makes it such a fascinating event and why it's so painful to bust, in my opinion, is that mm -hmm. it really is the last form of poker where it's nine days that the winner will largely be outthinking his opponents for the for, for majority of the duration. Someone will sun run, of course. Somebody will win an uh, excessive amount of flips. They'll be in more four to ones than the others, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, that's going to happen too, right? Like, yes, that's what I'm saying. Like but, the best player will have that happen to them as yes. well. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. saying they'll, they'll go hand in hand. Yeah, but, yeah. but largely speaking, where they're cutting their teeth is on the margins. And uh, a lot of those marginal spots are actually being curated for this exact moment in time where they've gathered some intel on their opposition. What does cutting your teeth mean? Uh, <laughs> nice. Got him. Yeah. It's a it's an old axiom for for like grinding, uh, for like chiseling out a living, earning an income. Okay. Uh, so where your edges? Yeah, like chopping out a skill set. That's why yeah. you have such great teeth, Matt. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they call it cutting your teeth. How do you cut your teeth? Yeah, I don't that sounds them. painful. I know either. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. The, look. I still haven't seen that yeah. movie where the guy gets curb stomped and they cut his teeth uh, off. Uh, <laughs> they cut his. I think uh, it's like cutting, I, I'm not going to guess it, but I, I just figured cutting it was, a rug? what I always thought That's was nasty. you cut your teeth because like you're getting ready for something mm -hmm. and then to like bite into something, but that could be just completely wrong. Yeah. I'm not sure of the origin. I know it's, it's I, I would always say that when I, oh, I cut my teeth back in like 2011 when I first started production that type. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I don't want a okay. tangent. Cutting. Because we we already tangented from Christian losing to yeah, yeah. yeah he didn't even right. get his just dues here. Well, yeah. I mean, we did kind of drag the. the we didn't rib so. on Christian hard enough though. Somebody said it's from teething. Uh, it's from teething. Oh yeah, it's a baby. Babies. Oh, that makes yeah, a that lot makes of sense. sense. Mm. Uh, for moving. Not so get one's my first experience by doing or learning early in life. Yeah, right. Yeah. Not somebody. My boy Chad said it. By the way, I got to give a shout out to my boy Seti. Still in? Yep. Yeah, Day is. five of the main. Let's fucking go, Seti. Shout out to... Uh, you, you couldn't even clap with both your hands. You just had to use your leg. It was the closest like thing. I had my phone. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, I've actually... Hey, 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 let's go, baby. I've stopped, <laughs> I've stopped clapping almost entirely with my hands. It's always with my leg now. <laughs> because I'm just too lazy to lift. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Too. So it's just, it's just a more efficient way. And then, you know... We, we got a, we got a few friends. Sound out, you can practice some things with that. Let's go, Nick, too. Even though you fucked me. You ruined me. <laughs> yeah, there's a few left uh, friends of the show. Queen of the Felt is still in. Yeah, oh, she's yeah, yeah. Let's go, uh, Nick Howard's still in. I think he Nick. bagged 1.5. 1.7. 1.7, yeah. That's 70 50? bigs. 70, 70 bigs? bigs? Yes, okay. big line 25k. Man, he was uh, having so much fun. He yeah, was obviously. having so much fun at my table. I mean, how could he not? He got aces against you. <laughs> no, no, you don't understand how many hands he got. Like, yeah, in he, the first, I want to say like five orbits, he said he had jacks three times, nines, that's kings, how, and aces. That's wow. how you win. Yeah, that is how you win. You suck hands. Uh, I do think Nick is like an interesting experiment in massive fields like this because he doesn't have a ton of live experience, but he has endless pool data yeah. from online. And, you know, him and I have gone back and forth a bunch about this, of how much of that is transferable to live. And I think where we talk past each other is that we don't recognize that the majority of the pool data is probably transferable to live if you categorically are able to identify who is who yeah right yeah. and i think that's where we miss each other is that what he qualifies as an online whale i would qualify as like a live shit reg mm -hmm. and i don't think that mm -hmm. the mistakes that a live shit reg is making is anywhere near what a live amateur is making right mm -hmm. and that's basically where i think uh we lose each other in the conversation is that the live amateurs lose in a very specific way that is counterintuitive to somebody who's studied this game at, at depth. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what leads us back to like this Ace King conversation, why, you know, it makes Landon's head explode to say, like, <laughs> how comfortable would you be facing an all in on the river Dude, with Ace King? You have the nuts. And very it's comfortable. Like, as comfortable as I could ever be. I would really I like remember. to see Nick go go pretty far and get get a lot of uh, you know, feature table coverage because he'd be he'd be very entertaining and interesting to watch. Yeah. I remember sure. at the old run it up house, we did uh, poker out loud with Nick Howard. Mm -hmm. It was Nick Howard. I forgot exactly the lineup, but it was him, you, and I know Justin Young was there. Oh, yeah. And, and, uh, and Nick's head exploded by the end of the fucking episode. <laughs> it was crazy. Just like, he was just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, random two cards just showing up. And he's, I remember him taking his hat off. And being, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, Art Perriman was was one of the other ones that were playing it. Him and Justin play a very non theoretical oh. style. <laughs> was that a poker allowed, or was that just the twenty five fifty game? Uh, we did both. Okay. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. The poker out loud was Kitty, okay, myself, yeah, yeah. Justin, Nick, and one other. Well, uh, it Colton, might have been. I think it might have been either of those two. It doesn't matter. No, no. no. Was, uh, Art played the next day when we played yeah. non poker out loud. But yeah, yeah, there were there were definitely a lot of head scratcher hands. Uh, there was a spot where, oh whatever, it's not important. Um, but basically, I folded like top pair with a flush draw versus a pot size bet from Justin yeah. that I thought was imbalanced, and he had a set. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I think Nick will be an interesting one to watch because his style is uh, so heavily into deviations, right? So it's not the not, or it's a very non traditional game theory approach. And I think that's what it takes to win in these big fields. Yeah. Uh, so it's a matter of like how calibrated is he in that deviation? I don't know. I don't know how transferable one to one it is from online to live, but. You know, he got second in the 5K two summers ago, I think. Uh, he got second in the 5K. What Prime. event was that in Texas? Prime in Houston. Prime. I would have to guess also the fact that the, a lot of the data that he does is from Ignition, right? Yeah. So that's like there U.S. facing, stars. mostly yeah. U.S. facing. So I yeah. feel like it's definitely transferable. Yeah. I, I'm not sure how much of the data specifically is from Ignition. I know that's where his players play. Yeah. yeah. But I think a lot of the hands were actually scraped from stars. Yeah, like stars 100 um, to 500 and out. Stars yeah. like global. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, Mid you know, whatever. You get you get 100 million hand sample, like, you're going to start to see some some trends. Yeah. Like, it's not, it's certainly not all dismissible. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's what makes him a good poker player. A, a, a good poker player is being able to see through the noise and find the signal. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really all we're ever trying to do. And that's why this game and this, even though it's nine days and feels very long, it's a very short span of time in hands. It's, it's why it's such a mind fuck. It's supposed so, to feel long. <laughs> it, it is kind of crazy. You think that if you make day five, you have to survive 40 hours of tournament poker without busting. It's right. hard to do. Right. <laughs> 40 yeah. hours. It felt I, I, just to like make that first day flew by, though. Like, I thought it was going to be like, oh, oh this is going to be a long... Because other tournaments I've played that were like 12 hours, it, day one. But the main event's so different. So Everything, yeah. But the main event, because there's so much post-flop, it's like, like it's, euphoric. it feels more like a Energy. cash game. And cash it's games fly by more So much me. fucking fun, and it's only 357 days until we get to the <laughs> I can't wait. Can't wait. Count it down, Connie. I, I got my calendar. I, mean, I got count fun, down, I'm Connie. marking off the things. Oh, I mean, you man. Can't wait. Yeah, you play it, it twice, and you go deep twice. Like, of course, you're yeah. fucking yeah. in. Oh, no. You're well, a like, lifer. I, I, well, I, yes, that's true as well. But I also, I heard there's a Bellagio 5 Diamond in October, too. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. I knew about that. Uh, like almost a month ahead of them announcing, I completely forgot. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I just completely Wait, didn't we forgot. talk about it. Uh, we talked about it when they announced the win ten millions. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't know then, but I knew like shortly thereafter, like maybe a week That's after. That's uh, the and I, ten million guarantee. In the this? win is yeah, yeah. Um, but they five. they bumped five diamond from December to October. Okay, which fifteen million guarantee isn't it? The win is yeah. Oh, sorry, the sorry. win is oh, fifteen million guarantee. Fifteen million. Yeah. What is Bellagio? It's bold. What day? No, what is Bellagio? No guarantee. No guarantee. Um, I think it'll be smaller. With the turnout that um, the series had in October, do we think that there's going to be a pretty big series in town for it's this tough, October? It's tough to gauge because the series didn't do that well last year. It felt like it did well, but it wasn't. the numbers weren't up in any capacity because of COVID. Yeah, I was going to say, well, we're in the it was relatively. It was relatively successful relative to COVID, yes. but uh, it's, tough, it's tough to know. I think the five diamond numbers are going to be way down. Um, oh, wow. I oh. think the December was a, was a very specific time that everybody floods in because it's the last event of the year. Uh, there's a lot of people who you know, are, are very happy to take some losses in order to offset taxes. Uh, there's just like a million different reasons. The holidays uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas, it like really hits that sweet spot. There's a million different reasons why that time frame was chosen and why it's one of the biggest events of the year. I think October, it's it's a little odd. Kids are just back to school for like a month. Um, you know, people are still in their daily grind. There's a lot of other options. I think that it's going to be probably a little bit more of a pro heavy grind fest. I would imagine, I, I would set the line at like, 650 entries really uh i was thinking at least Conrad's face is so happy star right now I'm you're gonna be in there conrad you, yeah I'll, of course I'll he's be gonna be in there. there i'll be oh but we got we got florida first to look for yeah yeah 
But um, no, what am I talking about? We have the 777 today to look forward to. My God, yeah, the series I can't isn't even believe I'm thinking Why today? About There's things. a 2500 freeze out. Or one re-entry. Alright, well. Why not that and then 777 tomorrow? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we've derailed Conrad's plans. Uh, we're oh. going to get into it. There's also a 1500 round and round. You do know I am a champion in such I games. I do know. I do know. So, <laughs> very well champion. Um, no, not a yeah. self proclaimed no. he He's got a ring. We should, he's got you know a ring. what? I'm going to show you my ring. Don't make him yeah. show the ring. Oh, you you have to kiss the ring. Yeah. I was letting him flex a little bit. Same. He was setting you up to flex. Well, yeah. thank you, Landon. And then I turned into Got a having a little down day, you know, Landon just hits him with the. Remember when you want a ring? It was a good time. No down days, buddy. It's all right. Um. Oh. Yeah, a lot of storylines still left to emerge through the main event. There are very notable names. Uh, by notable, I mean uh, known amongst the community. Uh, Korai is still in, which is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, honestly, like, that, that has to be such a fucking rush. Like, to go deep in the main period is such a once-in-a-life or once-in-a-career opportunity for most. Uh, to go deep-ish, back-to-back mm -hmm. -back years, yeah. is... Something I can't even fathom to win it and then turn around and have a crack on day five to still push forward I, to a run. I can't. I can't believe I forgot about this, but they they brought it up on the coverage <laughs> yesterday or the day before. Raymer, Greg Raymer, at the year after he won it, he finished twenty fifth. Wow. Oh yeah, I do. He remember finished twenty fifth. The year after he won it, final table two years in a row, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And that was a no, not Kata. Uh, New House. Mark Newhouse. New Mark Newhouse yeah. 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 got ninth back-to-back nine, yeah. back years. Twice. Twice. But Raymer wins twice. it, and then... Oh, not back-to-back, -back, but he did final table yeah. twice. And, then and I, I think, think that... Newhouse even said, like, I hope I don't get ninth or he something. Tweeted, yeah. He <laughs> tweeted after busting. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I, like, I don't care what happens next year. I just hope I don't get ninth again. And he got ninth. <laughs> 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 Honestly, if, there are so many things that, like, just point to the fact that we're in a sim. Like, I'm in on the conspiracy The glance theory. tweet right. about the... Yeah, the, oh, the yeah. And then he just fucking... I love seeing all the FOMO. Nah. Get the, Over the fuck circus, out of here, man. Circus bounty event. That, that yeah. was very planned. He was winding it in. Yeah, yeah I've yeah. tried winding it in, man. It doesn't work for everybody. No. You, <laughs> you wind just it out. keep winding, eventually yeah, it will. Uh, it the the Raymer yeah. thing was impressive, but the fields were a lot smaller. Like, well, yo, the, we have no, to remember second, Johnny Chan won it, won it, got second. No, I know, but when, when Raymer won it, it was like 2,500, and then it really exploded. The next year, when he finished 25th, there was five, over 5,000 people in it. Okay, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's significant. That's pretty impressive. That's a big field, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> wow. before this game got tough... There were recipes to winning. Like right. we could simplify it down to mm -hmm. don't bluff catch river. Right. Don't over bluff this particular street or whatever. Um, four days queen pre. Like when you think about the super system strategy, it was literally cherry picking little corners of strategies and saying like, do this always and never. Mm -hmm. Like don't play ace queen. It's a trouble hand. Like that was just a thing. That was a right. strategy. Oh, what, yeah. what a ridiculous notion like that we have <laughs> these infinite combinations of, of uh hands and textures and and uh ranges and everything else and we're distilling it down to always and never for like specific subsections mm -hmm. and you know to be fair like you could say that about three deuce off if you said never play three deuce off probably not harming your strategy very much but probably not um, well, I don't know. We'll find out, I guess, in the, <laughs> the dirty diaper. We'll find out in like 15 years. You know? Maybe, yeah. maybe this thing evolves. We'll, like, oh, so like, we'll, we'll find out that Rigby was onto something. I didn't realize there was a free betting frequency with yeah, it's just gonna be at, at some point, like the game is going to change in such a way where there's going to be like incentive to have a 1% frequency of every single hand in range. Just so that, uh, you know, you, you cause problems. But anyway, I, I don't want to tangent too to much on strategy. Just, uh, I think yeah. I'm going to cause problems yeah. on purpose. You got to cause havoc, man. We're here to bring I'm surprised chaos. you didn't bring up the, the guy that... Uh, whenever we've ever talked about Deuce 3, you always brought up the story with uh, some guy that merged that those, the, his Deuce 3s with all of his aces or something like that. <laughs> Wait, what? Wasn't it you? No, I don't think so. Definitely not. Oh. But I there's, a, lot of, there's a guy in Reno... Skinny. The skinny. Yeah, yeah. The, but yeah, there, there's three a guy in Reno got known that would play skinny. all of his deuce threes the same way he would play all of his aces. Smart so man. He just had 16 extra combinations of how, <laughs> he, how, how he played aces. I like all that the combinations of eight, of All the combinations the of deuce ones? threes. I, like I thought it was you, but I guess there was someone. There was another I like pro. that because there's no attachment when he has deuce three anymore. Yeah. In the sense of like, oh, I'm just going to bluff it off because I would just bet, bet, bet yeah. with aces. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you. Have, that's how you get value and from your aces. When Landon. the board comes ace three three, 
You get to yeah. eat it all. That's like <laughs> <personal>. <laughs> That's my bounty hand strategy. Yeah, imagine, imagine if uh, this actual Christian hand took place last year, and the man on the button was Rigby, and he just didn't know it. And fucking is text tweeting us about how three deuce off sends the fucking uh, like, How is this in range? Like you run like a Rigby sim, it's just three deuce, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's just like you know, shit happens. Like this guy got the main stage with five tables. Left. I joke, but I'm almost, I'm very serious about running these these quote unquote like main events. Main events. Sims, and th this is. Like, I was you, sending the ranges to the chat. We have like a three percent three bet range. A this is our mission from God, Landon. I was we sending the ranges next year. to the chat. I was making the custom range. I had an old man range. It included yeah. all King X, all Ace X, <laughs> suited and unsuited from under the gun. I, I think around. this is our. I think this is where we lean, man. For the next three hundred sixty-five days. We no, 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 we, no. 360 days. 357 Four. days. Thank you. Okay. For, the, for the next 357 days, we just we we go around the nation and we pluck we pluck uh, your average Joe Reg from every right? casino. Yeah, mm -hmm. we just get like one representative from like every state from the Northeast. Yeah, a hundred. You we know, get a council. We we get a council of WSOP main event Rec Regs. Yes. Alpha Rex, if you will. Alpha Rex. Right. And we just have them unprovoked write down their ranges it's by the position. Alpha Rec Alliance. Yeah. We just show them flashcards of hands, right? And, and they say, say good, bad. Would you raise or not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's, start with, let's start with like the, the bar tourneys. Because, you know, like they, they always send like 100 hands, people to the main event. You yeah. honestly could just go yeah. around and just go to every 1 3 game in the country. Uh, too much work. <laughs> so, no, no, Conrad's going to do that. He's going to be our yeah, boots Connor. on the ground kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> Conrad's going to go to every one three boots games. On like, seriously, because that's so once exactly we gather what's all going this on. Data, once we gather all this data, we're going to run fully fleshed out sims, like post-flop sims, mm -hmm. for how to handle each of these categorical right. ranges. Like, in a spot that's like... In theory, a one big line range bet. We turn it into a range bet for P75. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have like spots where like Ace King is a 3E, yeah. then it just like check call, check folds. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be beautiful, this man. Might be, this might be the worst idea. I think it's great. It's, great. I think it's, great. <laughs> it's the worst, but yet yeah, best. Because like, how much time do you think? Let's, if you put in, okay, let's say we put in actual amounts of time into this, right? Call it. 10 hours a week, right? Let's say you put 10 hours a week into this. What percent win rate do you think you gain, if not lose? Well, you get to gain from a couple events. The main oh, event. I don't know. Florida. The, the, the $10 million dollars up top? Yeah. Well, How much is that, that worth the to you? Most yeah. money in Wait, the what about yeah. Florida's the same yeah. thing. The Florida and the main event are very, very, Wait, very uh, similar. Wait, what do you think is going to stop us? Do you think suddenly we're going to run into a good player and forget what to do? <laughs> 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 we're gonna be we're, we're gonna be dragon slayers out there. We're gonna be fucking Captain Ahab spearing the white whales all along our path to victory. And every time that someone good gets in the way, we're gonna throw them right in the belly of the whale. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna be like, go ahead, play that Ace King versus like, Joe Smith. What do you think the hourly is on a project like this? I don't know. What do we play the main event for? About thirty-five hours? No, uh, about, I mean, about I seventy it, hours. 70 hours? Ten million. Two. All right, so, uh, man, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of half a million an hour. I played, a, I played the main event for three hours. That's because you, you don't played, have the ranges yet. You <laughs> played the main event for like four hours. Yeah. You, that's because you're working that ain't solid that's right in the muck. Yeah, yeah, we made mistakes. That's yeah. very clear. We were trying to play premium hands for all the chips. <laughs> like, like, what an yeah. error. Or three betting 10-9 suited, calling a min raise. Yeah. That's you want to know what the best thing I did? You want to know what the best thing that I did on day one in the main event? Under the gun one open, and he was a very snug young man. Only played very good hands. You know what I did? I flicked it in on the butt with seven eight offsuit. I flopped two pairs. That's a good, that's a good, that was the only hand I fucking won. That's yeah. a good. That's that's good. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's good. Good. you're right. That's fucking. It's, good. it's so good. It's so no, it is good because you, their their range is just so tight. And this then, guy's and always you're so pay. deep. And yeah. they just this is how my has knocked out of every tournament. Yeah. Exactly. You know how many chips <laughs> you know how many chips exactly. I'm gonna put in on a king seven four board? Oh my god, almost none. You know, I mean, if you put on 7-8 deuce, Thanks. as Ooh. many as will fucking let me. Yeah. <laughs>
Landon, where you got Look at Landon. Look at Landon. Look at Landon. Landon's completely broken right now. Yeah. Completely broken. This is sometimes this is fine. This is fine, Landon. You make value against people who don't bluff. Yes. Right. If they're never bluffing, I don't need to call with second pair because what what value is there to right? They're not bluffing me. I just I hey I took a shot and I missed. I tried to play bingo. I didn't get the middle square. That's exactly right. You play an entirely implied odds game. That's it. That's literally. For the first three, 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 three days, we just no. played the implied odds game. For the, for the first two and a half days. Yeah. First two and a half I'm not going to lie, man. I want another rip at this, the, man. <laughs> I can't all wait. All of the Conrad hand histories were... I called a hand that maybe shouldn't have called. Yeah. I ended up with I, the nuts. I overcalled, <laughs> I overcalled queen 10 off in the cutoff, and I made the nuts. Yeah, <laughs> what do you guys want? This is this is how you win. I'm with you, bro. This I want another rip at this so this bad. Event. Yeah. I want another rip at this so bad. I can't believe I squeezed the 10 9 suit. I can't you believe you call. did either. I yeah. was so mad when I saw that. No bad. DePaul was right the whole time. He was right the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I was literally looking I at it. I should have called. I should have check called the flop, and when I missed the turn, check fold. I immediately said Obviously. We were just talking about the strat. Why? You guys are finally starting to get it. Tortoise is like five years ahead of us. That's right. I promise. No. Yes. I won't do this. No, okay, well, won't. then you enjoy, won't. Right. enjoy you your three hours each year in the main event. He's right. He won't do this, and he will suffer heartbreak because Correct. of it. He'll just keep <laughs> we'll be here ones. for you, Landon, man. Look at Berkey. This is you in 20 years. I can't flick in the okay? call. On, After on expect the, yeah. the deep runs as often as Berkey. Always expect to run into it. Always, you know what? If I could go back to DeHommel shoving that river on me, I knew he had a full house. I knew he had a full house. You know why? Because it was fucking 2010 and I got shoved up when I bet in the pot. What are you doing in there with the 10 6 diamonds? Get the hell out of here. Man. I knew well, to defend the big blind before everybody else, so that's all. Yeah. But now, in hindsight, I realized I sabotaged. I said, hey, man, it's been. You know what it was? It was the guy last night on, on the coverage. I can't remember his name. Very sweet old man. Uh, they Mr. interviewed him Lynn? afterwards. Yes, yes. Love him. <laughs> yes. He called, he called with King Jack Pre. It came like King 10X. C bet. Or, sorry, checks. He bets. The guy calls. Turn queen. queen. Check, yeah. check. River, River King. King. Mm -hmm. And the guy just bets like. Oh, uh, I think it was all in. He shoves all in. Uh. Oh, no, no, no. He, he checked, shoved, didn't he? Oh, yes, yes, you're correct. He checked. Uh, Lynn bet trip, trip Kings with a jack kicker, and he got check shoved on. And he just goes to himself. He goes, well, no matter what happens here, I did better than I expected, and yeah. I had a good time. My and man. he flips his chip in <laughs> in a spot where he can never win the pot. No. <laughs> never. Oh, no. Like, never, 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 <laughs> never. And that's exactly what I did versus Du Hummel. I said, <laughs> I said, two hundred thousand dollars is more money than I've ever had. I have a six. A six is a good hand here, and this man deserves the rest of my chips. <laughs> yep. I call. How, how did he end up doing in the tournament? He won it. He won the whole he won thing it because that thought never went through his fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> he was never like, oh, two hundred thousand. That's a good amount of money. I don't care if I bust right now. No, he was focused on winning eight million dollars. Yep. Hmm. Me. I was just a lowly wonder, kid from Pittsburgh, <laughs> never seen very much money. I was like, I'm kind of sick of the main stage right now, and I don't want to grind a 14 big blind stack. Hmm, I, wonder, I call. I wonder if this is your life, if you call, and he was just somehow bluffing. You think, you think if I like, switch places with the Hommel no. and won 8 million, that I'd still be in poker? No, you had all of yourself, no right? I just think all that like yeah, you had all of no, it. No, I just I think that like if I would this own hand... an island right now, Landon. I would maybe be like playing with Guy Liberté in Hawaii, <laughs> like on the weekends. I just think that like, <laughs> let's say this hand ended up working out where the whole sabotage thing appears. Yeah, and like let's say you don't even win the main. Let's say like you final table the main or whatever, and you ha you win just enough money to stay in poker and get here, mm, right? Mm -hmm. you, you still don't have these doubts about this 10-6 hand. Uh, no, I do. I, I consciously can remember what I was thinking in the moment. You said, I don't want to play anymore. I, I, <laughs> I mentally said to myself, uh, this pot is way too big for me to fold and have 14 big blinds. Mm. Mm. And that's an acknowledgement. Not of, because this pot is way too big, and I actually have some pot odds. It was like I lose, but I don't. It's. Too I mean, big inherently, me. that's what I'm saying. But what I'm really saying to myself is, I know I call and don't win yeah. almost ever. Yeah. But this pot's massive. Mm. AKA, I'm invested in it. Sunken and cost. Sticking around with 14 big blinds seems awful. 
So right. maybe this is the one time that he shows up with dust. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. Yep. It absolutely was not. You don't want to know why? Because he fucking checked back the turn. What bluff would he ever have? <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't he bluff the turn? Oh, I hit him with the check raise check line. I was, I was, I was nice. God, back we got to link man. this, this uh, hand in, in the description or something. Yeah, we'll put it in the description yeah. below. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's an old hand. Everybody. Joe, you got this. Aware of it. Um, Norm Chad gives you the, where did that card come from? <laughs> <laughs> Picked up the flush Wait, draw. so did Mr. Lynn bust? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, he was supposed to be, like, the next moneymaker. No, no, he didn't. <laughs> he had a blast, though. I loved him. He really did have a good time. His interview was very nice with Kara. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was very heartfelt. It was, it's fun for the fans to watch. There, there are some positivities to take out of us being on the sidelines, watching every goddamn second of other people getting rich. Yes. <laughs> Talking about people getting rich, you know Robo got second in the 777 yesterday? Who did? Robo. Oh yeah, the online oh, no one. Yeah. Was 7K. 7K. Yeah. Wow. Nice. The Harry person Lodge that won, uh, his name is Harry Lodge, yeah. and his username is Timex C N T in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> what does that stand for? <laughs> <laughs> what does it stand for? That's I don't know. Something about next Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> um, I lost. Oh, can't believe I almost forgot about this. Uh, they announced the Hall of Fame inductee. The lone Hall of Fame inductee. And uh, my pick to click. That's a weird way of framing it right now. Yeah, that was really the weird. guy I thought was going to get in. Uh, very sentimental, obviously. Lane Flack. Inducted to the Hall of Fame. Back to back Flack. Back to back Flack. Well deserved, yep. in my opinion. Um, so what's the origin story of the back to back Flack? Uh, he won the same event in the World Series back to back years. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty strong. Is he the only person that's done that? Probably. I don't know. I don't like know. in a sense, would, like no, new era. No, 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 definitely not. Uh, Adam Friedman won the Dealer's Choice three oh, years yeah, in, three a times in a row. Gentleman oh. won the. He won yeah, the he won the. He won the. He won the. No, okay, he was rare, just the yeah. first to do it. It's actually okay. probably yeah. been pretty common. I think um, well, common enough, yeah, Scott right. Clements, I think, won the 08 as well, back to back years. Wow. Um, but yeah, I, obviously the sentimental choice. I, I don't think he was the most decorated of. The people on the list, and again, when we get into industry people, uh, I think Savage is well deserving. I think Ilya's well, uh, Isa. Or, or Isa is uh, very well deserving. Um, but you know, it's one of those things where I, I'm I'm glad he got in because I think he probably has the Hall of Fame credentials. And if he didn't get in this year, I think he never gets yeah. in. Uh, so that was probably the thinking of the people that voted. Yeah. I mean, like all you have to do is look who's voting. Like it was a kind of no brainer that he was going to get in. Uh, the people voting are truly a collection of his peers, not necessarily everybody else's. Like, again, I think Rask is the most decorated on that list by a long shot. Even Rask said, yeah, (laughs) he said, he's like, I deserve to be in there. Sure. He does. Uh, He does. He does. He's not. Of course. Of course he does. But it's not his peers voting yet. Right. Right? There just isn't really anybody from our generation that's in the hall yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't imagine there will be anytime soon. So unfortunately for him, I think he has a long wait. Uh, but again, yeah, I don't want to get off on the hall stuff again. Uh, I, I hope that they loosen the strings a bit uh, as far as like how many people they're letting in. I don't yeah. care if they stay strict to the credentials. That's fine. Uh, I just think, you know, we need to get to a point where it's like five, eight a year. You know, start getting people in who deserve it. Um, but yeah, big congratulations to him. The Hall, Hall of Fame bounty event uh, concludes today, I believe. I passed on it. Um, World Series had two unlimited reentry events running yesterday, and they were both turbos. And I just said, you know what? I've had it. <laughs> I've just it, fucking man. had it. It's Seriously. seven. It's seven hundred seven seventy-seven dollars, and it's seven-handed. <laughs> The seven handed almost got Just me. Just get there. The seven handed almost got me. If it was forty minute levels, I would have been is in. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I for sure would have been in if it was forty minute levels. I look and it's thirty minute day one and you oh. play down to like five percent and then it's forty minute day two. And I'm just like seven, 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 seven handed, seventy minute levels. Oh. Forget about it. I'm there. Yeah. On seven seven. They really missed that one. Yeah, on mm-hmm. they really seven, seven. Usually they do that. Corey texted me. He's like, I can't believe they didn't run that on this on July Corey, 7th. Corey really texted you about the 7-7? Seven, seven? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He literally no said, I can't believe they didn't run the 7-7-7 seven, seven, seven on July 7th. This is it, what he's worried about? It definitely, <laughs> yes. it definitely originated on July 7th. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess scheduling <laughs> conflicts at this point. Um, 
Oh, uh, Efro said that uh, Lane actually didn't win back to back same event. He won back to back no limit events in the 2002 WSOP. Oh, so, oh, so he wow. won like a 2500 and then like a 1500. The very in next the one he entered. Year. That's just, just okay, you know, that's strong. That's even that more is yeah. strong. Yeah, uh, confident Mercier has done that, just not no limit. Hmm. Um, no limit events. The year that the, the, the year that he had the big bet for three bracelets, I think he. Either went back to back win win so or he went back to back second first. Uh, yeah, it was that that year was insane. Mm -hmm. I thought he was gonna break Vanessa. Yeah, how crazy is that? He ended up losing the bet, and she lost more money than he did because she had to buy out. Yeah, uh, pretty what man? Man, WSOP was so different. <laughs> it was so I we we had no idea what we had while we had it. What did you have while you had it when you and had we it? We have no idea, we and we just have know. to hear about you guys. Yeah, all we have to hear is this, all this, the time. All this it sucks now. Everything sucks now. Yeah. It doesn't suck. All it's just it's, we it's, weren't it's around just so then, different. So we don't get it. Yeah, it doesn't suck. It's just so different. Like it used to be uh, a collection of the best and brightest stars in the game, and uh, I think now <gasps> what is? I think now like the idea of stars has has disappeared. Right, like now, professionals strive to increase their bottom line. Period. They know that there's not really much to gain by being notable or by mm. being in the media or the press. Yeah, uh, I mean, they don't. They don't put any priority on that whatsoever. And you know, rightfully so. Um, so now it's not. It doesn't really highlight and feature uh, up and comers. It doesn't really highlight and feature those that are established in the industry. Uh, instead, it's just like kind of this diluted, massive festival where. There's just like a lot of uh, non-stories, I guess. Yeah. You know, like that bet could just never happen now. Yeah. And it's it's not like it wasn't even a sharp bet on either side. It was probably a pretty fair bet, right? He got 10 to 1 to win three bracelets. That's insane. And he almost fucking did it. Wait, how much wow. did they bet? 100K to win a million. It, wow. it was a whole and thing. And he got two? Yeah. He got two and then final table the third and Vanessa started laying off a yeah. ton she of She ended up risk. losing like a quarter million. Yeah. Uh, she had to like do a bunch of buyouts. Wow. He ended up getting second in like an 08 limit That's event or crazy. something like wow. that. Wow. Isn't this yeah. almost like a... I remember people saying that Durr had a bunch of bracelet bets or Massive. something. Massive. And he got second and in like then, a 1500 no limit. Right. Mm -hmm. And like the entire rail was like pro dur or like anti dur like he's gonna break everybody that rumor better. was that he like could have broken like temporarily broken poker that summer yeah. <laughs> if he had won the bracelet he wow. just bet infinite to win a no limit bracelet yeah and i think he probably got like pretty long odds yeah you know, 15 to 1 or more something along those lines uh and yeah it was like a huge sweat he he, he got second in like a massive field like a 2000 person field yeah uh lost heads up to i, I don't remember who but I bet he does. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think like I think it's hard for these things to come to fruition now because now the industry is so so much about being sharp and everything is all about the sharps, right? Mm -hmm. Like so nobody nobody wants to make it an ego fit. The ego is kind of dissipated out of this community. So, you know, it's made the media's job a lot harder because those storylines were ever present. Oh, yeah. Every update was like I think Mercier Final Table like four or five events that summer. So, like, imagine being Vanessa oh my God. having to sweat where it's like, not only does he immediately ship two bracelets, like, right out of the fucking gate. Yeah. Like, first couple weeks type stuff? Yeah, like, I think he got, like, a fifth, like, one of the first events he played or something along those lines, and then bracelet, bracelet. And then it's like, he final tables one or two more thereafter. It's like, holy shit, That's this insane. guy's doing... What a god. How did impossible. he know he was gonna have such a good summer? Well, he had a talk with Jesus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I think I'm due for one of those. It, it's it's different for like a guy like Jay who's playing yeah. literally every single event. Right. He he was very focused on small field. I mean, you he's have to remember that. Like, yeah, he's multi tabling. You have to remember literally that, live multi tabling in two different tournaments, running back and forth. Right, wow. and like events like oh my God. the 10K Deuce to Seven Triple Draw Championship would get like 83 runners. Right. Uh, they might be up a little bit now, but this was like 2016, 2015, something like that. So, uh, you know. When we were coming through, like, the early 2000s, like, 2003 through, like, call it 2015-ish, um, field sizes were constantly growing, but mainly on the no-limit side. So, pre-Black Friday, though a lot of the prelims uh, began their boom there, 
it was only the main event that really saw the ma major, major surge, right? Like a lot, it was a big barrier of entry to play the World Series. So Brian and I didn't play until 2006 and we had already been playing for four years. And then I sat out the whole 2007 World Series because I was relatively broke. I, I mostly just played sit and goes. Uh, I didn't start playing prelims, I don't think, until I may have played, maybe played a handful, but like I think 2010 was the first time I played six events which was the year I went deep in the main. Mm -hmm. And then the following summer I had money and I maybe played only 11. So it was like a real honor to even be able to compete in prelims because the price entry was so high. Yeah. Minimum was a 1500 and they didn't run a ton of them. Right. The schedule was very shrunken. Uh, so the world series itself was maybe, I don't know, 45 bracelet events compared to like yeah, 90 now. 2,500, 2K, 2,500, 3K. Yeah, so it was like, 5Ks, you know, it was like maybe right. 40 events and like 10 or 15 of them were championship events. So those were all mixed limits mm -hmm. uh, or, or whatever. So those are basically off the schedule for a no limit player totally. Uh, then you'd have like a remaining 20, 25 events where only five or 10 of them were between the 1500 and 2500 price point. Everything else was like 5K, 10K. Mm -hmm. So it was like, Yo, it, it was difficult to compete. Now it's turned in. Th that's why I always keep saying like it's watered down because yeah. the ability to play is just, it's always there both from the market sense of it's easy to sell and then from the, the uh, monetary sense in that money's gotten cheaper and the price point has gotten significantly lower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many people can just flick in $400 for a Colossus event right. and that's why it's massive. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess furthering down that line, let's talk a little bit about the coverage yesterday. Uh, as, you know, now now we get into day four, I think it's most interesting. We, we can talk about the whole weekend, I guess. Um, yeah. But I don't really think there were a lot of storylines that emerged out of like day two, even really day three. The chip leaders were kind of like who we thought they would be. I know Bryn was atop the counts at, at some point. Uh, that got a lot of notice. It was Zamani. Zamani oh, yeah. was. <laughs> they were both yeah. like, what were they like? It was right like up in top five. Zamani, Ali, like mm -hmm. top fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. Um, but now moving into day five, uh, leaning on like day four coverage, uh, it basically shifted from a heightened focus on the Barstool Collective day one, day two, and whoever remained in day three, to um, more of household names. We'll say uh, moving into day four. So a few. Uh, a few of the feature tables had like Farrah Gelfon, Mike Matisau, uh Corey was at the secondary feature all day yesterday. Um, I'm certainly forgetting a few, but the, Dan the Smith. well, yeah, the, the big oh, feature boy. table was the final one last night where they moved Dan Smith's table onto uh, the main stage. Uh, he was playing with uh, Zhao Zhang, uh, who was just providing all the fucking action. And then uh, Ali, I'm a steal your bitch. Was, uh, was, no, I'm a no, stealing bitch. No, that gives him too much credit. I'm a stealing. Yeah. Uh, stealing bitch. So, sorry, those, those yeah. names are tough for me. You know, yeah. I'm not great with pronunciation. You got, it's got to be the phonetics. Uh, I, I get it. <laughs> uh, this is our professor of pronunciation. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> the enunciation master who speaks in typos. <laughs> he speaks in typos. He does. <laughs> I don't understand how, like, you put out, like, you put out a full sentence and not one word is spelled correctly. Some of the, some of the, some of the things in the group chat. <laughs> some of the things in the group chat. Some of the things in the group chat are literally sentences where at least two of five people just. Quote it and just respond. Like what is what? this? Set? And, it's, <laughs> and it's like there's somehow like six numbers mixed in there. It just makes no Yo, sense. Yo, listen, guys, I don't have time to be fucking changing shit. You'll you'll just read it twice. You'll figure it out. He gets like Spanish it. characters in there. Like the, the backwards <laughs> e is in there yeah, all the time. Yeah. Or the upside down e. Whatever. Backwards e. Lma Lma nine. Lma nine is the best. Lma nine. Lma nine might be one of the greatest like jokes I've ever. It, it, nobody knows about. It's, it's yeah, quite impressive. He, Put the nine instead. It's like, of how do you even get a nine? Zone? Yeah. How do you even find them? You, have to, you literally have to switch on an iPhone to the numbers. Maybe he's on a keyboard. Did you see the tweet by, I think it was Angela Jordan? <laughs> yeah. So prior to this table getting moved, uh, Dan Smith got, he, he ended up getting moved to this table. That's what made it kind of more the feature. But prior to them getting moved to the Thunderdome, uh, Angela Jordanson, who also still in the main, shout out to her. She tweets, I'm at a table with Ali and Dan Smith. Dan gets into a hand with a chatty player that has been in a pot, uh, that has bet the pot on the river. Dan asks, did you hit the seven on the river? Player, can I answer that? Is that allowed? 
Dan looks at Ali and says, they let Ali play here, so I don't think they will care. <laughs> <laughs> That's some goat shit, man. That shit oh. is so She followed up that tweet and said, everybody at the table is laughing, including Ollie. Yeah. It's just like, God damn it, man. Like, we've gotten to the point where, like, he's in on the joke now. Like, yeah. this is unbelievable. Was there, there's just no shame. It fucking sucks. Um, I think we were hoping for that energy to stick yeah. whenever it got moved to the feature. I didn't get to watch all of it. I, fe I fell asleep an old man. But I don't think that, like, much was said. I don't think there were many confrontations uh, between the two. And to be fair, like, Dan's going to be – he's going to pick and choose his spots. He's not yeah. just going to, like, defame him for the sake of it, like, just, you know, constantly uh, saying things that aren't funny yeah. that, that call him out. Um, but if you give him a shot, he's going to take yeah. one. Yeah. I wish one of the people on that council was at that table. Like a the Jay Coon fans? or something. No, 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 no. The, <laughs> it, wow. the, 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 the GG council Poker council? council? Oh, Imagine oh, I'm a spicy. stealing bitch with the, the council of Dan's at the table. Just like uh, the full council. It would just be... <laughs> the council of Dan's would eviscerate him. The integrity council. Yeah, the integrity, the integrity council. council. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, though, uh, with the people who are named to the integrity council, they're all very to themselves and generally nice individuals. Like, do you think Lucky Chewy's going to say anything oh, yeah. Yeah. to yeah. Ali? <laughs> He's going to wish him a Zen morning. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's no slight against Chewy. It's I, I just his personality. I wish you find peace right. moving forward. I, I hope all the money that you've stolen was worth it and that you find an inner peace moving forward. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean. If, also, well, do you believe in aliens? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, uh, that's, you know, a little bit of the good and the bad, I guess, of, of these cheaters. Kind of making a splash in this event. Uh, it's not going away anytime soon. I don't think Bryn is in any longer. RIP. Uh, no one cares. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Ali and uh, Rock are still on. I think Rock is like 15th in chips, maybe. Uh, I, I always look to Landon to confirm, but he's, he's busy I'm running looking, a sim. I'm, going, I'm trying to find it. He's, he's, <laughs> run, he's, he's running his running, he's running yeah, a grandpa sim. He's running yeah. that main event sim. He has a privacy screen now, so I can't actually yeah. tell what he's, he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm creating he's, uh, he's I'm running a cheater sim versus an old grandpa sim, <laughs> yeah. seeing if that maybe this is the kryptonite yeah. that they deserve. Yeah. Like, no. can John Smith find the kryptonite necessary Please. to get through to the RTAers. You ain't seen none of this shit before, boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just hitting them with the limp off 150. Uh -huh. Yep. Showing them with kings when he gets the limp raise in. Like, yep. what's the sim gonna do for you now, son? <laughs> Nothing. I think he's got like 2 million. Um, That's but, a lot. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, you know, some, some of the things that have come to light from all of this are, and, and this isn't a secret, like, we make a stink of it as much as we can use, utilizing our public forum. And this is a really tough thing to strike a balance with, I think, uh, as both professionals and mouthpieces for the industry, right? Like, it's very hard to find collaborative efforts with everyone in the industry when we can't give the benefit of the doubt to uh, show good faith. And I say this with, like, a grain of salt because I kind of came hard at poker, poker news today. Uh, and the reason is, is because I just don't think that they're demonstrating good faith any longer to the community, right? Uh, I'm basing this off the fact, uh, and people misconstrued what I was trying to tweet, yeah. right? I said that, I hope it doesn't go unnoticed that uh, Poker News had zero issue effectively shadow banning Poker Bunny last year during the ladies event with, while giving her zero coverage. And the reason this is relevant is because she got 20th in the ladies event, right? Now, the backstory to this is that there. Uh, is a lot of evidence that she was like very mean to the reporters. Uh, there was accusations that like, you know, she was verbally attacking them, whatever. So they had every right to not cover her. I'm not defending Bunny in this tweet. I'm just saying it's clear that as a company and as reporters, they took a stance of we will silence this individual because we believe that she's acting in poor faith uh, towards us as the media and potentially towards the community as a whole, okay? Mm -hmm. You want to take that stance? Fine. But keep that fucking energy when a bunch of cheaters show up into a room of a thousand people and you're cherry picking them out to give them shine. Yeah. Right? Like nothing happened. Right. Like nothing ever happened. You do not have to cover hands that Ali is in. No. Yeah. You do not have to give Bryn an end of day report write up when he finishes in the top five. That was wild. It's, it's, that kind, was, of, it's kind of disgusting. Yeah. It's really disgusting. Yeah. You, you're, you're actually, you're making the effort, like the, a full effort to 
shine the light on these guys. Right. Like, and you you're and you're not you. using yeah. you're not using that opportunity to at least acknowledge and 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 inform those readers of what they're alleged of having right. done. Mm-hmm. And you did clarify that you said it's, it's not the reporters on the ground, it's, it's it's the higher ups that are making these decisions. This yeah, this message obviously has to be coming from some management. I don't know right. if it's middle management, upper management or whatever, but like mm-hmm. there was a concerted effort somewhere along the lines to permit uh, to, to give permission to the reporters to not cover Bunny for all the reasons that they deem fair. And I'm all for that. I'm behind you. But you don't get to say that on one side, that, like, I don't like the way I was treated as a worker by yeah. one of the members of your community. Therefore, I am going to mute her. You don't get to do that. And then in the same breath, say, it's not my job to mute somebody that has affected the entire community You don't negatively. get to stand behind your workers as then not stand behind the community. Community, that, exactly. That, that exactly. Absolutely out of control. I, when yeah. I was looking at it, I was like, wait, what the fuck is this? Right. Yeah. Like, it's absurd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that is... Bothered. <laughs> that, that contradiction is the, is the main thing that I'm trying to shine a light on. Yeah. It makes Poker News no longer a good faith actor in our community, yeah. period. They're not serving the members at all. They're self-serving at that point, yep. and their only interest is in whatever will drive clicks. Yep. And you could turn that right around on us and say, like, we're doing the exact same thing. Maybe we are guilty of it. If you see me with that level of hypocrisy, call me out on it. I'm pretty sure we shine lights and not, like, <laughs> um, we shine lights to the community and not... Um, up. Well, we try to be a mouthpiece for the community, right? But like, my views are not always going to be represented by the community at large, well, and course. I acknowledge that. Like, this is an opinion show. Fine. If ever there's a time where I'm that hypocrite, fucking call me out on it. Like, I will happily either walk back some sort of statement, or I'll address it in a way uh, of letting you know why the hypocrisy exists. Right? I'm not. I'm not trying to stand on a soapbox and say that like myself or anybody else on this platform or the show as a whole is beyond reproach right clearly we're not we'll make mistakes along the line what i don't understand is how coming into the series this wasn't discussed in a meeting previously like you're telling me that there was no there was so chad holloway and a bunch of other reporters are basically tweeting back at me saying like you're absolutely wrong there was no shadow ban against bunny and we have to do our job and cover these people because they're relevant to the industry it's like okay well what you're telling me then is that there was no message from the top. You guys are just doing as you as you see fit, right? And you're telling me that you saw fit to not cover Bunny. Like they're basically saying, like if a reporter if a reporter felt threatened and didn't walk by her table, then that's the reporter's right. It's like okay, well she finished twentieth. There were only two tables left, three tables, whatever. Like you you couldn't not report. Like you would have to even accidentally report a hand at some point, right? Yeah. So it was obviously a concerted effort. And that's my only point, is that you made no concerted effort against these cheaters who took eight or nine figures out of the community. So that means it had to be coordinated, yeah, right? I, I don't even care walking it back to, to Bunny. Like, it's it's absurd. Like, you just can't do this. Like, you're working for the community, kind of. Right. Like, you're, you're a part of the community. And right. Like, if you don't want to do? not cover these people, fine. You control the message. Yeah. So control it. Well, that's the same. Poker News did the, the interview with Bryn, right? Yeah. 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 They threw him a softball. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, so maybe there's one or two articles out there that are are taking a little bit of harder stance written by a couple like Chad uh used himself as an example and I do agree. He's he's uh written some articles that have been hard on the cheating allegations. But they're buried, man. Nobody's reading these articles right now. We're reading chip updates. Yeah. And if you're gonna highlight these names in every goddamn yeah. notable on chip like count, day two. Yeah. When there's there's 6,000 people left in the event, and you're telling me that Bryn Kenny and Ali need to be highlighted as notable chip counts? Like, give events. anybody else the shine. Yeah, right, mm-hmm. exactly. Give some satellite winner, you know, the shine. Like, right. Let's see someone else that's being amplified other than those two. Right. And yeah. even regardless of this whole fucking uh, Poker Bunny, I, I get why you brought up Poker Bunny. It's the relative... Or it's like the the process of how they're they're muting people, and it's like what is Poker Bunny now more annoying than eight eight or nine figures of of money being taken out of the poker ecosystem? Uh, of course, that's ridiculous. But if we just set that aside, and we know that well, 
these alleged cheaters probably stole eight or nine figures. It's like, why are we shining a light on this? Why are we shining a light on them ever? Yeah. Right? right. They deserve, Poker News deserves to have this criticism regardless of the Poker Bunny situation. Yeah. I think people are so obsessed with trying to attack that whole Poker, poker Bunny situation. Yeah. But it's, we don't care about They're that. They're getting caught up on that example when it's really not about that. Correct. Right. The, the, the reason for the example is because they, they collectively, or maybe individually, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, because the reporters represent the brand, unfortunately, right? So, so even if it was only a concerted effort amongst them, it still reflects on the brand. Anyway, the strategy was clear, right? They made an ethical and moral decision amongst them collectively that she was not to be touched because of uh, some actions that made them feel either unsafe or warranted to basically say she's not worthy of our coverage. We're a private company. We get to pick and choose as we please, and we've deemed her banished, right? The only reason I use that example is because there aren't any other clear examples, right? Like, I don't know of any other clear examples. And like, for Chad to say, like, that's categorically untrue, it's like, don't don't feed me lip service man we run around in the same circles we hear all the same things i have the same back channel access that you do like i know way too many firsthand accounts of people that will just corroborate that this happened mm -hmm. right so what you're telling me is then you're actively not doing this with the cheaters and that's a problem and right. it should be a problem for everybody right this is the black eye on the industry we're spending so much time in fighting and arguing whether or not it's okay to amplify barstools yeah. uh participants yeah. on the main stage like is this really what's proactive or should we be talking about why the fuck cheaters <laughs> are sorry. still playing the That's world series a, winning millions stupid, of dollars it's mm -hmm. a stupid gripe the right. barstool thing it's, it's insane a stupid mm -hmm. gripe it, it, we're, we're, we're talking about fringe stuff yeah. right we're talking about like is it a greater gain that Barstool brings in their community? Yes. Or is it a greater loss that they like, potentially the, alienate women? The benefit women? Is, outweighs the cost. Right, but, it but, just does. Right, but the, 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 the conversation is just that the cost, it comes at uh, potential misogyny and alienating women. And I'm not saying that that conversation is not important. I'm just saying that on the list of things that are egregiously happening uh, that impact the community at large, the cheaters are fucking number one. Yeah. yeah. Right? If we can't get that right, we're never going to have a nuanced we're conversation dead. like yeah. this at the bottom. Yeah. Like, there's just been multiple accounts, just like from first hand things that I've talked with people about, of like maybe wanting to play some high roller stuff or whatever and be like, oh, like, I don't want to play. Like, I know that the people in the field are like just like actively cheating. So it's just like one of these things where if this doesn't get like, I guess, effectively solved, there's, there's problems that aren't being seen because people are kind of speaking in like a silent majority. Versus like the vocal minority yeah. kind of thing. Where it's yeah. like, oh, I'm not going to play a high stakes tournament because most of the people there are cheating and I know they're cheating. Yeah. But if they're removed, it's like, oh, now I have a chance to win. Right. I can, we'll actually play the tournament. Mm -hmm. yeah. one, one thing that the Mike Possel situation really uh, shined a light on is that this community cannot be, the justice can't come from outside of the community. We can't rely on, uh, you know, the California government to rectify all of these problems and we have to police it within our own community right so, so this is why it's like you know as as much as we want to say like oh poker news has to be unbiased yada, we have to make sure that these cheaters are rid from this community or find some sort of way to rectify whatever is wrong yeah and, and when there's an effective monopoly on on the media aspect yeah like we have to hold their feet to the fire right like if if you're going to create a system where the bulk of the news is coming from community mouthpieces that are either operating on behalf of the community at large or on behalf of themselves and their platforms, then what ultimately is going to have to happen is the collective is either going to hold them to a higher standard or hold the sole media outlet outlets to a higher standard. And right now... Poker news is not being held to any standard whatsoever. If anything, the vast majority of the community is constantly chirping, saying, like, you aren't doing enough. And, you know, it turns around where it's like guys like me come off as, as, as a man shaking his fist at clouds, like always finding what's wrong uh, with the current scenario. And 
you know, maybe I don't do a good enough job of highlighting how much I think is right, right? Like, I try to always give that compliment sandwich when I'm about to say something about the WSOP because it is a once-in-a-year event that they do such a fantastic job on across the board. But there are little things that are yeah. really fucking bad mm -hmm. that could be done a lot better. And, you know, I would like to say the same thing about poker news, but I have a very different opinion of media in this space. Like, I think it's devolved into shit. I, I think that, like, largely speaking, the community at large is who we turn to for our media coverage. I'm not even just saying us. I'm saying, like, everyone. Like, the Twitter followers. Like, there's a reason why guys like Ike, even Polk, Negranu, Bonomo, uh, basically all of these high rollers, uh, my, myself, there's a reason why we have 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 followers, right? It's because nobody is checking in on pokernews.com mm. to get their scoop anymore because no. they're not getting the truth. Yeah. They're not getting a real informative scoop. They're getting some third or fourth hand bullshit that's turned into a fluff piece after the fact of all these other industry leaders coming out and saying like look this is how it is and we've had to bite our tongues for long enough right so you can slam the ground all you want for throwing a fucking selfie stick but he's out there speaking generally unfiltered and that's big for the community right oh. i have all the issue in the world with the way doug handles business but again he's out there speaking unfiltered and generally has the community's best interest in mind right so it's like what do we do? What do we do? Because if you put this back on the individuals, we're too fallible and we're too attackable. Yeah. Right? We'll fail. Not, mm -hmm. not even due to our own doing, but because of things like Negreanu throwing a selfie stick. Like, one individual is too cancelable. Right? So the media has to improve and grow and try to actually have the community's best interest in mind rather than trying to figure out what's going to sell so that they can get enough clicks to stay... In business, I guess. So how does that start? Like, how does the community take steps forward? It's like, tough, man. Standpoint? Poker news is is a really difficult business, in my opinion. Just yeah. their yeah. entire business model is so difficult, and you can tell with, I, I guess, the regression of the site. You know, it's a lot more ad clickbaity stuff, right? Mm. It's a lot. You go on it, and it's just like, oh my god, I, it's information overload. It's just like, yeah, it, it's too much. At least for me, a lot of no, the time. I, agree with that. I think what's going to happen is we're going to see. I think we're already leaning into this because America is such a huge get for all rest of world sites, and I think what we're going to see is a progression towards what was happening pre Black Friday with uh, operators, where they were pouring a ton of money into ad marketing, and it was mostly done through television. I think what we're going to see now is that's mostly going to be done in short form content. Mm -hmm. So whether that's, uh, whether that's short videos or like Marley's type of videos, yeah, that type of stuff, um, articles, blogs, whatever, right? Sure. Like the things that are super digestible, sure, even sure. if it's just social media, sure. right? I could see GG stars party yeah. really overtaking this space yeah. and making poker news completely irrelevant, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. or, or just absorbing them all together. Yeah. The only thing that they're really serving is boots on the ground for live events. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, it's, it's time the, the written hand history evolves into something else. Yeah. And I, I said this earlier this summer, like, imagine they probably write thousands of hand histories up over the course of the summer. Imagine if they just took 15-second videos instead. I know. But that's what I was saying. Like videos would be so much better to watch. Like you get to see It'd the interactions, yeah. the and they're more accurate. But I think what you're saying about poker news is sort of reflective of just media in general. Now is it is like very sensationalized, and everything is just about clicks and profit. And you that's you see like media sources funneling into the more individual level. I mean, this is happening across a lot of different industries, like music industry, like regular news like it's all sort of moving towards an independent type of thing yeah where there's a less barrier to entry to become a, a journalist or someone who creates content and so now the big content or news outlets are struggling to keep clicks and they have to turn to sensationalism i, I think i think you're right in the sense that the central location of news is no longer through a website yeah 
right? It's through YouTube, it's through Twitter, uh, maybe to a lesser degree, it's through Instagram. So that does allow for individuals now to be some of the most sought after when it comes to this news. And, and you know, we saw this with, uh, with Polk and his influence over the crypto space, right? Mm-hmm. Like this CoinFlex thing going down, he's really feeling, you know, like never, never in the last seven or six years that he's been super relevant, have we seen him swallow a more bitter pill or get a bigger taste of his own medicine? He's getting dragged yeah. through the streets across the internet, not just poker Twitter, crypto Is Twitter, crypto finance Twitter, Twitter, dragging Twitter, him too? destroying him. I haven't really looked. Destroying him. Like, yeah. I mean, you can see it in his tweets, right? Like he's, he's out here basically shouting into the void yeah. that like, hey guys, it's still me. Uh, I didn't do anything wrong. I stand by the integrity of my brand. I stand by the integrity of my decisions. Uh, this company fucked up. Now, and again, this is very consistent and on brand with Polk, right? Like he points to things like self-integrity and the fact that like he's always been for the community, but he never takes ownership over the failure, mm-hmm. right? Like uh, from the outside looking in, this guy's never failed at anything, or at least in his own eyes, he never accepts failure for anything. So it is this, it is this weird space where, you know, from my point of view, if I'm him, taking a much more humbled approach and rather than asking for uh, acceptance of what happened, instead ask for forgiveness or forgiveness uh, in, in, a, in a very meaningful way of like, look, uh, you know, I, I could have done more due diligence. In hindsight, I could have done X, Y, and Z. Uh, I was more ignorant then than I am now. And I'm on this ride together with you guys. Like that's the messaging that the audience is looking for because they don't want to give you sympathy. They're looking for sympathy themselves. Yeah. They're all mm-hmm. fucked. Yeah. Right. And a lot of the loudest voices didn't have a dime on CoinFlex, but they want to see the mighty fall. You know, they, again, it's much like what I'm doing, calling out poker news. It's, it's when you recognize such a fucking hypocrisy slapping you in the face. And then the person who's being hypocritical saying like, no, you're wrong. It's impossible not to make a deal out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why, like, I guess I'm a little concerned whenever we start to get to the point where we do get the majority of our news through individuals. Because now there's no checks and balances. Yeah. There's no layers of... Well, there, there is. I mean, there, there is because people can always make reply, well, you know, media. It just depends sort of, on, like... It's like sort of a self-policing whereas like there i would say that there's probably less checks and balances when it's coming from a central source well it's less because like when it comes to stuff on twitter and like people just tend to either follow or when it comes to engagement with a certain tweet the person that has like more followers more Mm -hmm. like more engagement gets more of the call it public credentials gratification of like liking a tweet or whatever because like let's say someone with 100,000 followers tweet something, and then someone with five followers responds to it uh-huh. with something factual. No one sees the five follower thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Or very few yeah. do, and, He's it's, right. and it's yeah. incredible. He's right. right. Like, when when people can get ratio, right. That's like fair. getting ratio is one of the strongest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you look at sick ratio, bro. Yeah. yeah it's, it's one of the strongest <laughs> ways that we can speak out and, yes. and keep people in check, but yeah. it's rare. Yeah. It's not an easy thing to have happen where a 300 person follower uh, account suddenly ratios like a celeb. Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, you're right. This is this is bigger than poker. This isn't. Uh, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. It's not unique to us. No. But it does. It, I I think it is something that we face moving forward. Uh, you know, I. It's so weird, man. You think that like no matter no matter what happens, you'll never grow out of touch with younger generations, but it's just not true because you don't have the same. Uh, like you see the world through a different lens, right? Like so, Brian, myself, and Andre and Conrad to uh maybe slightly lesser degree. It's like. Well, we grew up in a time pre-internet, mm-hmm. and then lived yeah, through the phone. right. So we know, we, we we know the we know the the different spectrums, right? And it's it's the same thing for like you guys. You grew up in a world that was like pre-social media and now post. But it's like that next generation behind you is all social media. Yeah, they've been yeah. indoctrinated yeah. by all of it, and, yeah. and they don't have any uh, any frame of reference yeah. for what it was like to get news in different ways. It's pretty and, weird. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's a, gonna continue to get weirder, right? Because like yes. when I was six, there was like 
there, there was no Facebook, Instagram, or whatever. When it's like, when you, but like now, with kids that are six, they're just you grow up with it. Right. They're just indoctrinated already into a system that we recognize has a lot of flaws. Right. Yeah. So Especially when it comes to yeah. like personal self value, when it comes to things. And like, that's and that's the next wave of adults to come. Right. Yeah. So it's like, I, I don't think it's obvious to everybody how uh, this impacts society at scale. But, you know, when that next wave of adults comes through, like they do have some, I'm not going to say that they have a lot of impact because we all, I think, are kind of in agreement that the political system is pretty broken, but they have some voice in the narratives and the way that society shifts and bends its rules and ethics and, and things of that nature. And it's like, I get it now, man. Like, I understand why we have no relation to the boomer generation at all. Because, like, they know a totally different world. And they're yeah. so fucking disconnected from the idea of gender pronouns and, and uh, societal progression like this. And it's like, you know, our generation's kind of melding in the middle. Where it's like, well, we kind of get it. And then there's the Zoomer generation that's, like, so overly sensitive. And so overly critical of, like, things that those that are in flux between the two are just kind of like, hey, Relax. this doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like... Pick your there's, battles. There's bigger problems. Yeah. Right. Pick your battles. But that's like, like a consequence of being you're uh, growing up with seeing everybody's opinion all over the place, like right. coming at you information overload. Like you guys grew up with uh, only a few opinions around you, whereas parents, friends, like kids growing up now, they're hearing what everyone thinks all the time, comparing everything all the time. Yeah. There's so many. I, I think. I think you're right. The noise is getting more vast mm -hmm. and the signals are more difficult to discern yeah and i think for for like our generation we grew up in a relative echo chamber but uh you know you could still do your own due diligence and your own research mm -hmm. and figure out what was signal versus yeah, noise. you could but go to like the stone library or wh whatever yeah. where they wrote on rocks right and, yeah, yeah chiseled out the ten I, Commandments. I don't even think that's true what? I, I like i grew up in a, a I, at the time i thought it was super uh diverse and and um, very liberal. Yeah, I, I didn't realize until after I moved out to the West Coast that it's like a super red area. Yeah, like super super red. And I was like, oh my god, um, just like I, I just felt like there was a huge culture shock moving out of there. And it's I, I was I'm from the East Coast, right. same where we live. Yeah, yeah. Very, pretty similar to like yeah. But now I think because there's such a diversity of opinion online, it's so much easier for like kids to be so different than their parents mm -hmm. but yeah. back that's, in the day that, that's that is definitely true. true yeah that's true what i'm saying though is like <laughs> it's also easier to fall into the trap of uh of buying into the noise uh-huh the noise uh -huh. is so much more vast uh -huh. right so like the the example that comes to mind is um like nutrition and fitness myths right oh, like a lot that. of them get propagated as fact as hardcore fact and when i was growing up that information was difficult to get out to the masses, sure. right? So my exposure would be a coach, uh, a, a trainer, like whatever. And I'm just taking anecdotal knowledge off of somebody that I trust, who as I grow a little bit older, I realized was full of shit. Right, yeah. it's like right? they may or may not Art be true. Art from the Iron Pit. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, no, I mean he knew Art kind of knew what he was doing. But, he knew what he was doing. But, but like, you know, you, you, you go the lengths of doing your own research and you start to realize that the echo chamber that you were thrust into yeah. was obviously full of a lot of bullshit. Yeah. Um, a lot of lies. Now, I think it's the opposite. I think you're just thrust into the noise, yes. right? And, you're, and your job as you age and get into your 20s specifically is to start to curate your echo chambers. Yeah. And now that becomes so much more dangerous. It's why we see so much radicalization, right? Because yeah, if somewhere along the line, you decide that veganism is the cause that you're going to champion for, well, now everything that's noise about veganism becomes signal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And everything that's signal about, let's not call it anti-veganism, but like, you know, people who eat uh, meat or, or whole foods or whatever, right. Is all noise to you. Yep. So you spend all of your time appeasing the echo chamber that is just riddled with noise and very little signal. And it's all about building an anti, uh, noise suppressant for the other side. Right. And we just see this constantly getting carved out over and over it and over again. It becomes this like social acceptance game yes. within your echo chamber. Yeah. Where which you're is molding why. Molding your entire thought pattern yes. around this very, social very acceptance. Very, very puritanical. Game. 
it's very weird yeah it, it, which is why i think so many of us that are in that middling age group of like you know 30s to 40s where it's just like hey we're, we're just out here trying to be good people I know. We, we kind of understand a little bit of both like let's find some compromise yeah. and we're just getting absolutely obliterated by anybody who's radicalized in any sort of movement that you don't immediately succumb to yeah right so it's like you'll just be attacked by everything that you are that you don't embody so i don't embody a vegan so vegans you know i, I would become a target then of veganism if i spoke out against it in any way shape or form if in any capacity i was able to message something along the lines of like if you want to be a vegan, that's your choice. No big deal. I think you can do it healthy. I just think it's more challenging than if you're willing to eat meat. Mm -hmm. I now become somebody the who's enemy. attackable. Yes. Yes. Right? You're, you're probably probably enemy up right now. Just be, it's so in-group, out-group. Like Correct. all over the place. You Correct. just see this tribal in-group, out-group. It's like we're all cavemen on the internet. Right. Like we've... Right. we've we've regressed. Put, yeah, yes. yeah we, <laughs> we've regressed away from the tribe mentality yeah. into the individualism. Yeah. Uh, and it's turning into, yeah, you're right. Because then what ends up happening is there are people who want to be a part of everything that they, like the entire spectrum of, of causes or groups that they align with. Mm -hmm. And what they find is that there's a lot of contradiction amongst them. Yeah. Right. So they try to play the rational actor throughout and say like, okay, I understand your point of view, but here's the here's the alternative point of view. Like there's some signal from this alternative point of view. That's also worth listening to. And there immediately becomes infighting. Yes. Instantly. Yeah. Right. And the natural inclination is to just block and move on, block mm -hmm. and move on, block and move on. Right. And it's, it's until all that's left is the most extreme form of whatever exactly. thought that exactly. You are and that's how we land on these radical extremes. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the point that, I know that we took a real long road to so get poker here, but, news. <laughs> but like, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm shaking my fist at poker news for. It's like, I'm not, I'm not upset that you muted bunny from your, from your reports. And I'm not upset that you reported on the cheaters. Mm -hmm. I'm upset that you didn't do one or the other to both. Yeah. Right. Report on them both. That's I don't like care. And do it with honesty. Say that this person was disruptive and, you know, yeah, was absolutely incorrigible to one of my reporters, yeah. right? Report that. Yeah. And report that GG has banned this list of players, confirmed, and that, or, or even if it's just alleged, right? Even if it's yeah. alleged that they report that, like, when you put a fucking chip update of Ali, report that he was turned away from the EPT window. Yeah. Every single that time. That context is fucking mm -hmm. every necessary. Time. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. They, were making the or they were making the example of, like, do you think every time Deshaun Watson drops back to pass, the announcers are going to say, Deshaun Watson, who was accused of sexual assault by 27 <laughs> women, drops back in the pocket? It's like, no, of course not. But there will not be one single game that that man quarterbacks this year where that won't be brought up. Right. And I know that for a fact because the NFL is very good at controlling their message. When Michael Vick came back after the, the, the time in jail and the dog stuff, there was no fucking game that that man played where that story wasn't told. Now, mm. did they twist it? Sure. Did they fluff it a little? Sure. But it was, it was there. The yeah. cold hard truth was there. Michael Vick spent time in jail for running a dog ring, a, a dog fighting ring, period. Deshaun Watson was accused by 17 women of sexual assault, period. That, those are facts. They will never be... There, there's no shirking the facts, right? So their their thought process is lead with what's true and then spin it. And I can live with that because at least I got a dose of the truth, right? When you forego the truth and spin it, you're spitting in the face of the community. Yeah. Yep. And I, I want to make sure we're not conflating. We're not necessarily saying, or at least I'm not saying that poker news is bad, like in its totality. We just can do better. Right. And especially in such an extreme case for this community where we know or we have high certainty that these guys cheated and across the board you see unprecedented actions being taken by companies that or would ordinarily just turn a yeah, blind eye. Yeah, we moved the needle, man. Yes. We finally were loud enough where operators took fucking action. And you were the news. <laughs> and you're not supporting that? Yeah, it's crazy. How? It's crazy. Like, what they don't understand is by not supporting that, they're indirectly supporting the cheaters. Yeah. Right? It's just impossible uh, to not yeah, take I, that I, stance. Well, like, especially because... They're like, amplifying. I, they're amplifying. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know, man. 
The attention span of people is so is so short that like if you don't keep like reiterating it, it just goes away. Yeah. Right. Like we, if you don't talk, this cannot go away. No. Yeah, you're but absolutely if right. If you don't say anything, it just might, from a perspective standpoint, like especially from like a poker news standpoint, or like the public viewer standpoint of reading the yeah. poker news. What if, hey, what if Ellie wins the main event and they never mention it? That they, would be the greatest thing on earth. Greatest. Honestly, it would be yes. the greatest thing on earth. Like I can't think <clears throat> of a of a of a louder stance. As a community, I can't think of a better way to champion for the hundreds of thousands of people who play this game and solicit your site, be it Poker Go or Poker News, yeah. than to acknowledge that a known cheater won the biggest event in our industry and we are not going to talk about it. So right. here's something. Um, somebody lives in town in Vegas, plays every uh, live event around, doesn't have Twitter, doesn't um, really not in touch with the poker community with like reading stuff. Or, but he checks the updates and stuff. Had no idea Bryn, Ali, or any right. of them were cheating. Yeah. That's crazy. Had zero crazy. idea. Mm -hmm. It's actually the, not that crazy. And, and the truth is, that's the majority exactly. of the poker. Yeah. Yeah. Not that when I was and just we, a poker yes. fan, I didn't read poker news. I, I didn't know. What, didn't know online. It's crazy. I didn't even though. He know plays online every poker event in town. So it's like, if he doesn't know. Yeah. Nobody knows. The, the average And if we're mad poker at Poker News, know. we should also be equally as mad or more at WSOP yeah. for allowing this shit to happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, they could they, they could I mean, again, I don't know the legality from their side, but it seems like they could have been proactive. Mm -hmm. I feel very confident that they can 86 whoever they wish. I mean, like, look at yeah. the list. I mean, yeah. it looks like in the future stuff might well, prevail. Like, but allegedly, they're aligned with that that council so hopefully things will move what's worse dropping your pants and throwing a shoe at people or stealing nine figures of money from people the difference is one's One one's easily on observable I, I, un I understand but yeah. you know i'd much rather if one is banned and the other is not we have a problem yeah, yeah, again. yeah. I, I, <laughs> I i do agree with that part <laughs> like that that wasn't a, a nine figure offense or a ten figure offense that right. the guy did right yeah i, I mean the, <laughs> I think the reason why we give the leash there is because we're hopeful that their coordination with the with the Integrity Council will lead to those future bans. Sure. Yeah. So we're still hopeful on that front, right? Yeah. But in the meantime, nobody wants to be fed this dose of let's celebrate what they've gotten away with. Yeah, fuck you guys. It's, yeah. it's, <laughs> you. it's painful. Most people that play poker aren't necessarily interested or involved in the community as a whole, right? Right. Most just play Most, poker because yeah. they like poker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. If there's nothing reported on it or nothing talked about, why would they have any sort of knowledge that anybody was doing anything nefarious? Right. Yep. Unless you're actively involved in the community. Yep. Or care a little bit about like following somebody on Twitter. Like if you followed <laughs> if you followed D Nags on Twitter only, you would know that these guys are like allegedly cheating. Yeah. And it's not because <laughs> he's not saying anything. You would know because he's saying stuff about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's on us too. Like, this is a big part of the community that's not being reached, and we know this as a company. It's like these are the, the these are the staple people that, uh, as a trading company specifically, like we want to have more outreach to the people that are not engaged in poker Twitter, the people who aren't really scouring YouTube, right? And we know the caps on those two spaces. We know that poker Twitter is basically limited to around. I, I mean, I would say like a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand is like pretty much the cap. And a guy like Negrano supersedes that. He has a half a million, right? Mm -hmm. But he's kind of an outlier. Probably has a lot of like old guard type of uh, following that isn't very tapped into the community anymore. Uh, so, you know, let's call it the, the 150, 200K mark, right? Poker Twitter, or sorry, uh, Poker YouTube, pretty comparable. Sure, Brad Owen has risen, risen past that, but uh, he's very global. Um, he's also at a point now where like... Uh, He's mainstream enough that I think that there's crossover into other industries, right? But when we're looking at the, the general populace, there are millions and millions of people playing poker. Now, maybe not seriously enough to want to care about the actual news. Maybe not seriously enough to want to train or uh, to be participants in uh, any of these operations, call it WSOP or online. But a segment of them are, right? So if there's millions and millions playing, there's hundreds of thousands that certainly want to be a part of this. And they're definitely not all on Twitter or YouTube. So we need to be able to find a way to message to them. Uh, we need to be able to do better. And it's kind of unfortunate because a lot of them probably do fall under uh, the, the resistant to change 
regime, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of them probably are still trying to find a card player in their local card room mm -hmm. and trying to log into pokernews.com. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you know, they are going to pokernews.com for their info. Yeah. So it just needs the, to be persistent. It the just needs to be a persistent message of what accounts of what happened so everybody can say. Yeah. Will Berkey be shadow banned from Poker News after this? Oh, Never get an update again. <laughs> Never get an update again. <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't. I, I don't really care. Uh, I like a lot of the guys and girls that work at Poker News. I, I, I like personally more. know a lot of them. So yeah, wanna, it's frustrating for me to be fighting with Chad because I like Chad a lot. We've yes, had a lot of yeah, really I like Chad a lot. good mm -hmm. encounters, and I understand that like he personally feels attacked. Yeah. Because it's the company that he works for. I would hope that like yeah. if somebody were saying this about Solve for Why, any of you would kind of feel the same. But this message isn't about Chad. Correct. It's not about the reporters. It's about a top down message mm -hmm. that is yeah. very open to just saying, like, you know, hey, this thing exists in the community. We don't care. Get the fucking clicks by any means necessary. Like, again, there was there had to be a meeting to start the World Series addressing top down how are we approaching Jake, Ali, and Bryn. Yeah. And someone along the lines gave the green light to cover them. Yeah. Period. Uh, yeah. So anyway. Wow. Anyway. Day, day five of the main today. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be <laughs> here. Somehow uh, this made Conrad sadder. Like, yeah, yeah. As, as dampening as, as all of that talk was, we mentioned day five and immediately just sucks the air out of him. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that there's a lot to look forward to. There's a lot of good storylines, as I mentioned. Um, Landon's I'm sad man. Mr. Lin's out, man. That yeah. was the, that he was going to make the next money. You know what? Boom. Here, here's what I can promise you. As somebody who's been watching this for quite many years, mm. there's another Mr. Lin out there. In the yeah, field. I will find him. Maybe <laughs> today is. on the coverage, right. I'll we, find my new Mr. Lin. We, we will find him. Yeah. There's a sweetheart story in every single year. Yes. Last year, it was uh, George Holmes. My man. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he was it's fucking awesome. the easiest guy in the world to root for. I So you know how like they have on YouTube the... Um, they have like how so-and-so won the main event yeah, so yeah. i was watching the moneymaker one because i've never actually seen that full in full mm -hmm. but i watched the highlights and like that was so entertaining yeah. and epic also his bluff heads up with the king seven was oh, kind yeah. of sick I, mm -hmm. I love the Respect. i love the reaction after he gets the fold yes. he's just like, <laughs> i know i know <laughs> yeah. somebody in the chat just said john hasp Remember him? Oh yeah, ago? he was great. <laughs> yeah, seems John Hesp was great. Sorry, side ten. Do you guys do you guys remember what uh, moneymaker's manager's name was at the time? Get a manager? Yeah. Wow. His Why? name was Anthony. I think it was Anthony. But Gamble. manager for what? He was Stop. an accountant. <laughs> so it was no, Gamble it was. and moneymaker. Right, yeah. Stop. No, that's, that's true. So crazy. <laughs> yeah. Wholesome. Wait, <laughs> he had a manager? Yeah. Bro, he won a thirty dollars salary. It was his last thirty bucks. How did he have a manager? <laughs> He was an accountant. What That's like Conrad a having for? a manager. <laughs> well, he has only, so much time, only so much time until I have one, you know? Conrad Someone's will have a manager. Yeah, I'm your manager. It's 100%. You're... Look at him. He's too it's, much of a personality. He will have a manager. It's, it's the tortoise in the hair <laughs> industry. It's <laughs> 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 we got this. Oh, my God. <laughs> that, that had some real makings in it. Yeah, it there, does. There's something there, yeah, for sure. There's something there. We need shirts of uh, tortoise in the hair. You guys, yeah. talk, you guys can talk about main event strategy from... Uh, the for the next 350 the days. From the, yeah. from the, oh, from the opposite end of the Exactly. Yeah, I just want to know what he's going to do. Yeah. In all hand histories. All right. <laughs> it's just a daily podcast during yep. the main. The correct strategy is somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> is, um, is it? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll be I'll be sweating the chip counts pretty heavily. I think that we're going to lean pretty hard into main event coverage over the next few days. Yes. So, uh, I won't be here. Where are you going? I don't know. I'm not going to be here covering this shit. No, <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to disappear. Like, He's going to New Jersey. Yeah, I'm going to New Jersey. Yeah, you're going to New Jersey. I'm going to New Jersey. I'm out of here. I'm beach. taking a boat somewhere. I don't know. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it for today. Yeah. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Let us know below what you think of uh, the, the representation of the cheaters in the media, what you would like to see done differently. Let us know if you care. Uh, I think this is a pretty good topic. There's a lot to talk about here. Happy to continue it in the comment section below. Uh, quick update. We have four seats remaining for the Poker Out Loud Academy. That is September 8th to the 11th. Uh, if you're interested in that, head to academy.solferwide.io for more information or to sign up. Also, today, a new episode of On Second Thought dropped. 
Uh, I'll remind you again tomorrow because we'll have a teaser for it then. But if you're a member of Salt for Y TV, you can head there and check that out now. It's another blind on blind battle between Christian, uh, or sorry, between uh, Nate and Landon. Really fascinating hand. Uh, double paired board. Landon goes hard with the 10 high. And Nate's in a real predicament with uh, ace high. So if you want to check out what the solver would do in that situation, head over to tv.solve for what? Wait, is that right? No, it's solve for no, Solve for <laughs> Used yeah, to be. My bad. Uh, solve for y.io. Check out On Second Thought. And uh, we're going to play you out with a little moment of zen. Uh, we're we're, we're going to give you, yeah, we're, we're going to play out uh, the old Mike Mattisau bust out hand. Oh. No words spoken. Just let it run, Guapo. Bye, guys. Peace. Later. We get from that as out. <clears throat> First four nights here, I hit three. Damn. Different casinos too, all different. The thing about Mike's aggression and, and any yeah, player like Mike and their aggression, when you put out something like that and is. get played back yeah. at like this, yeah. a lot of times you know where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> and might be saving himself so. <laughs> the and first trauma. I played for like, I mean, a I minute if that. Worry if you're gonna call uh, it or not. First time I played for like a minute thirty. Yeah, with no just call, ace really. highs is gonna be luck. This is a much more interesting hand if his suits were switched and he had the ace of clubs to see if he can mm -hmm. cook up a a river raise. But I don't think we're gonna see any of that right now. All in. Wow. All in? No way. All in? Mattiso with here. a 2022 blow up, maybe? And Mike Mattiso just bluff shoved all his chips into a made flush. It's This is a really tough spot for Zawadzki. Uh, you have a paired board. You only have the nine high flush. You have the zillionth nuts. You know, you were confidently raising this for value, but it did go lead and then you raised and then you got jammed on. Um, also, Mattisau put out one of those blocker looking bets like of only 70k. More. And I can't tell. I can't, I can't you, see you from can here. You can easily honestly. do that with both the nuts trying to get raised. So, like, this is a really just an interesting Fifteen. line by Mattisau. Nikolaj Zawadzki with a chance to take out four time bracelet winner Mike Mattisau if he could muster up a call here. But Mike has built a story that is tough to crack. And it's just not that many more chips. That's what makes this so incredible that he pulled the trigger here. This is not a huge call for, from Zawadzki, chip-wise. Exactly. Two and a half times the stack of Mike to start the hand. Could this be the end of the 2022 World Series of Poker for that man, Mike Mattiso? Is this really, it's 215,000 more to call. Is that really what it is? Yeah. So he's, <laughs> this is insane. Getting over so three to one. To one yes. Perhaps thinking though, Mattisau just is never bluffing. Who bluffs off their main event? Mm -hmm. Looking at you, weird. Old Mattisau, these chips are in the middle already, right? right? When Mattisau is known for blowing up, he would get snapped off. Okay. But this is a new Mattisau. It is. it is. Much less crazy. And now he's going to cut out the calling chips and see how much he has left behind. And to Jamie's point. He's gonna have a lot left behind, so that might make the call easier. He does call, and Mattiso is gone. Oh, shit. oh wow! Oh wow! Hey, Mike. I went for it. I didn't think he had a flush. Nice hand. Day no, four, Mike went that's for sorry. it. Sorry, it's taking so long. I don't know. Yeah, that's taking so long. Man.